السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله um, today we're going to be discussing uh, just three and I'm going to try to keep it short honestly I tend to ramble so much I truly apologize and I know sometimes my notes are just really really long but um, it's just this just for some reason had just so many lessons and it was so hard to pick and choose kind of which ones to focus on alhamdulillah and so um so pretty much this just finishes off Surah Baqarah and so from you see from Ayah 253 to the end you know um, there's a couple of key things that Allah focuses on and uh you know how last year's there was a lot of like technicality to it you know it was laws of divorce and hajj and and battle and this and that and so it was it was very like um it was it was laws mainly dealing with uh, with actions but in this in this later judge and i mean in the last part of surah Baqarah, you see you see laws that are you see allah describing more of the internal spiritual state and so you see allah talking about ch talking about charity and iman and you know and how and and allah explains how he's the giver of life and the giver of death through several through several stories that he goes through you know uh, one, uh through through three certain examples that i'm going to talk about later inshallah and you see a little more more so of focusing on the spiritual state of ourselves you know and trying to strengthen that and um so charity is something that's very heavily focused on uh towards the towards like the the last part of um surah baqarah and you see how allah constantly says you know that that you know give and give and don't give secretly it's better for you you know uh it, it and you know you're you know one thing you, you have we have to understand about charities you know sometimes when people give money it's like it stays in their mind like oh man I just kind I just gave a hundred dollars you know I just deposited I just like you know took out a hundred bucks from my from my savings and just gave it to like Islamic relief or something and you know that thought sometimes lingers in your head but we have to understand we have to take sadaqa and charity as a transfer of funds where your where your fund is going from your dunya account to your akhira account and so that money isn't going to waste that money is gone you know what I mean we have to understand that that money isn't gone that money is there and so you know the more you transfer the more your savings for your akhira start to pile up and pile inshallah you know as long as for Allah's sake and so you know we need to remember to to constantly give, it's a purifier, you know, constantly give, give secretly, give secretly, and one easy, awesome way to do this, to make sure, you know, that you don't remember, like, what you gave and how you gave, is to give frequently in small amounts, so, you know, if you give, like, once a week, or once, uh, you know, once randomly every two weeks, if you, if you give constantly, you won't really remember the last time you gave, so it doesn't really stay in your mind, you know, if you gave once a year, you'll remember, like, oh, I gave, like, this, this, this much, like, that, that one, month in that one year so it stays in your mind so give frequently and give little amounts that way it, you don't remember it as much another thing Allah focuses on is, is to remember that don't follow up charity with with reminders like you know you know when you do somebody a favor and sometimes this used to be a habit that I used to do a lot you know with my sister and I be like hey I did that for you you know why won't you do something for me it's fall fo it's following up charity with reminders like oh I did this for you and this is something that Allah says that you know it invalidates charity so this is something we should stay away from and so charity is a is a main is a is a highlighted focus of the latter half of surah, uh, the latter part of surah Baqarah. And Allah also mentions, you know, the ayatul kursi is an ayatul kursi is an um is is in this last part of surah Baqarah. That's an amazing ayah where Allah describes Himself, and you you get you get closer to Allah through knowing through knowing Him how He you know like sleep doesn't overtake him Allah never gets tired his dominion is huge you know yet he never he never tires from anything he's the creator the giver of all things and so um towards uh towards later and later you know, towards the end of surah Baqarah, Allah, describes, Allah you know teaches us how he is the giver of life and the giver of death through the through three scenarios that 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 occur and in two of the scenarios uh, involves Ibrahim alayhi salam and one of them you know um Ibrahim alayhi salam is having a conversation with the king who who's a disbeliever and the king said the, uh, and um Ibrahim alayhi salam he says he's he says um 
he says, uh, okay, Ibrahim alayhi salam is having a conversation with the king who disbelieves. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is telling him that Allah is the one who gives life and death. And this king is arguing. He's saying that I give life and I cause death too. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, like, like counters his, his statement by saying that Allah brings the sun up from the east. So, you know, he challenges him. He tells him, so bring the sun up from the west. And then at least this, this, this king is just astounded, speechless. You know, he doesn't, like, he can't do that. No human being could do that, you know. So it's a very, like, powerful lesson that we learn here and the second scenario you know Allah, Allah you know like affirms this belief you know by by where where he causes a man to die and he like he's dead this man is dead for a hundred years and then Allah brings him back to life and we see how Allah can res like resurrect you know Allah can like give like bring death about and then bring life as well he can cause the dead to become alive again and the third scenario we see Ibrahim alayhi salam asking Allah to show him how Allah gives life and death like he asks like not that not that he like he's questioning but he just wants to he just wants his heart to be satisfied and Allah tells him to slaughter four birds and put their portions on each on, on each hill and after that Allah calls and all uh, and the birds just come flying back so after these birds are slaughtered it's just they come flying back alive as one again subhanallah and so we learn through these three scenarios that Allah truly is a giver of life and he's a giver of death and there's no other that can compare to Allah and um Surah Bakr ends off with a beautiful dua and it's in the notes so you can go and read it and then we move on to Surah Al-Imran and this surah, it, this surah, I really like this surah because there's a lot of powerful da'wah um, ayahs in it. You know, it talks about, it talks about Isa alayhi salam, Jesus alayhi salam very extensively in some parts, you know, where Allah says that the likeness of Jesus is as that of Adam where it was, Allah, you know, all Allah has to do is just be and it is. You know how, you know how um, Christians tend to focus on the fact that the remarkable, you know, virgin birth of of, of Jesus alayhi salam, they make that a huge deal, you know, that's actually one of the reasons why they claim that he is like the son of God, you know, but Allah teaches us, you know, in Surah Al-Imran that, that the likeness of Jesus alayhi salam is just that of Adam, he was just another prophet, and all Allah has to do is be, and it was, you know, it wasn't, like, Allah can do anything, and so, and so we kind of, Allah kind of addresses, you know, the Christian belief and, you know, and, and, and explains, like, how that is wrong. And so then we go on to learn about Zakaria alayhi salam and how he makes dua and how he asks Allah for us. And, and, and briefly we learn about Maryam alayhi salam and actually starts off with her mother who makes a dua to Allah that she's, you know, dedicating what is in her womb to the worship of Allah. And we learn a very important lesson in parenting. You know, today it's a sad tra tragedy that a lot of parents, you know, have extreme, like, huge expectations that oh I want my I want my son or my daughter to become a do become a doctor or a lawyer you know all these huge huge goals when that before the child is even born or you know when they're very young but subhanallah this woman you know all her all she envisions is that just she's dedicating what is in her womb to the worship of Allah all she wants her child to do is just first and foremost worship Allah that's a really awesome powerful parenting lesson for all of us for our future generations inshallah and so um and so this is really just a you know very brief like summary of, of of just three and I'm missing a lot of stuff but the notes are very extensive so you know this 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 uh, video just summarizes some basic points but it would be really awesome if you guys went back to the notes they're very extensive and so you know you can get a, a more uh, thorough um, understanding of those just through that and so um, inshallah please remember to share these videos and please uh, remember to you know inshallah join in on this project with us and let us know how your progress is going we we hope this brings um, some benefit inshallah. And um, inshallah, keep following the series. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>